Hey guys, uh, Aaron with uh, Poppleton Ave Leather and Craft. Um, I went ahead and got one of these machines. Uh, there's a lot of people that don't like them, I guess. Um, I've watched a lot of videos. I think um, I'm just going to give it a try before I pull trigger on a, a large sewing machine. Um, today I'm just going to take it apart. Uh, kind of grease it up clean it up um, a lot of people say that their machine runs really really rough uh, mine actually is pretty smooth already so I'm not gonna have to do a whole lot um, another reason I got this is uh, eventually I'd like to be a nomad and I wanted something small that doesn't run on electricity that I can still still do leather work on the road uh, if uh, I ever get an online business going or whatnot. But anywho, um, I'm just gonna, I'm not gonna film the whole thing, taking it apart. Uh, I busted my tripod on my two month backpacking trip. So what I did um, with the legs is I cut one in half and that's what I'm gonna keep my spools of, uh, of thread. And then up here I got uh, I forget what they call this, but it, it uh, helps the machine feed a lot better. There is a post that comes with it you can use, but um, I'm going to do it this way. And I built a mount that I'm getting ready to uh, rough put it on, and then I'm going to take it apart and grease it. Um, I thought I had a bearing for in here because it's an open bearing. Um, I think I'm probably eventually I'll get a closed bearing for that. But I'm going to take this bobbin arm off and grease up the bobbin shuttle. Other than that, everything seems to be running pretty smooth. Um, so uh, I'm going to kind of take it apart and show you what it looks like when it's taken apart and after it's mounted and stuff. Um, okay, so I got it just rough mounted. I don't have the bolts back here tightened up. Um, one thing you're going to want to do right off the bat all is put a lock washer on here. Um, but I mean, it runs pretty smooth. And I haven't even greased it up yet. Okay, here's the uh, <clears throat> the bobbin shuttle assembly. So basically, you got your bobbin that goes in here. And then this has got... It's like a gear and it sits in here. Um, I'll go over that later. And then in here, you've got this guy with teeth on it and that's what moves this right here. Um, it's kind of greased up, but you can feel that it's still got some of the, when they milled it or whatever, it's still got the shards. And then also, Right here, you can see where they kind of rough ground it. I'm going to come back with a file and get all that carbon off. Um, it's from uh, that's from when they cast it, and uh, they just didn't mill it down very well. I'll probably smooth this out too, and then grease this up really well. I think that's the only thing I'm really going to have to do grease wise. Um, otherwise, you know, you have an oil port here and an oil port here. These really don't move a whole terrible lot. And then I'm going to put some axle grease in here and maybe file in here a little bit too. But I think that's all I'm going to have to do. I think that's all the greasing that I'm going to do. I can get it all put back together, um, kind of clean it up a bit, and then I'll grab some uh, uh, some leather and uh, do some stitching, messing around with uh, uh, the stitch length, which is adjusted right here with this screw. Um, the further down it is, the larger your uh, your stitch is going to be. The further up, and then this right here is for. Uh, your foot tension so if your uh, foot is pushing down too hard 
uh, and leaving marks in your leather. You can adjust that. Oh, one other thing I need to do, I've noticed almost everybody's done, is it's got some rough teeth on here. Um, I'm just gonna smooth them out and see how it goes. Um, if it's still leaving marks, what I think I'll do is I'll just take it down flat and I have a jimping file and I'll just put some jimping on it. Um, jimping is, uh, if it, nobody knows, it's like when you have a handgun with wooden handles and it's got that crisscross on it, that's made, uh, it's called jimping. All right, so I greased it up good. I used like um, grease that you would pack your bearings on your car and in here I used both uh, three in one and it runs nice and smooth. Just kind of trying to work out um, any shavings or anything there. So I went really heavy on the oil, um, but as it seeps out, I'll just wipe it up, uh, make sure it's not seeping. Um, and also here, I filed this, a lot of this pitting out and then I took some emery paper to it and then I took it to uh, a thousand grit, so it's almost like a polish, except for the little pittings. So hopefully it'll run smoother that way. Um, so I'm gonna, oh, and I packed these bearings too. Um, see if that'll help out with some of the noise. All right, so it's running a lot more smooth. One thing I did want to point out when you're putting this arm back on, uh, just get your first, or just start your screws and then put your needle in the down position because when I put it back, uh, the needle wasn't lining up um, with the hole. All right, so I got the bobbin set up. Um, basically, um, all you do is you put your bobbin on here and then I just kind of wind this around a little bit. Uh, well, first of all, uh, here's the full spool and then it comes up through this, this eyelet and then down to this top hole. This hole right here is an uh, oil port. And then I go around through the hook on this bottom tensioner and I wrap it around there a little bit. Um, then, having trouble with this earlier I need to uh, file this around so I can get that bobbin all the way on there so I got to use two hands and then kind of hard to show you without my tripod okay I started with just a couple stitches um, this isn't gonna be a straight line because I don't have my tripod so I can't you know kind of feed it in there But, it, you know, it works pretty slick once I get the thread, thread size and everything figured out. Um, I think this is actually going to be a nice little uh, addition. Um, it still has a little foot marks. I think uh, probably do a little bit more filing on the foot. But the stitch turns out, you know, pretty decent. Uh, I think because you can't back stitch, stitch with this machine, what I'll probably end up doing is just having a needle and then going back through, back through the holes. But I'm gonna play around with uh, thread size and needle size, and hopefully I can get it to stitch what I usually use. I believe it's 150D is what I'm using, and um, from what I understand is you can do up to 135D, which I think is actually a little bit bigger than. The, what I'm using. So uh, I'm gonna do some more research and uh, some playing around. But uh, that's what I got. Oh, another, I did oil this up really good too. This shaft and these shafts. Um, so I've got residual oil coming down too. 
So hopefully by the time I'm done experimenting and getting everything squared away, it should be uh, should be all right. All right. Uh, so I'm going to show you uh, the shoe patcher. I made a stand for this. Uh, this be uh, started this video like a month or so ago. I just been busy doing a bunch of other stuff, so I figured I'd finish it up. Um, it's tuned up pretty well. Uh, like I, I got it all greased up, and I ended up taking uh, the presser foot off and grinding the feet all the way down. And then I took my jimping file. Um, I'll take it off after I'm done sewing and uh, show you what the jimping looks like. Uh, it still leaves a few little marks. Uh, <clears throat> I've got the presser foot tension as low as I can go before the nut will fall off. But um, I got a scrap piece of leather, I, two pieces I glued together. I'm um, just going to mark a line. Um, most of the videos that I've seen say that you can't backstitch with this machine, but you can. Um, I'm running <clears throat> 138 thread, and I got. Uh, what size needles did I get? Uh, 17s. No, I'm sorry. Uh, they're 140 22s. Uh, that's what I'm using. Uh, the ones I got, these, they're too long. Uh, I have no idea what I'm doing with sewing needles, so I just kind of ordered something. So uh, I had to cut it down, and then also uh, with uh, the needles, typically they're flat on one side, but these are ballpoint, so they're not. So I had to uh, figure out how that needle actually goes in. Um, with these needles, there's a little barb, like a fishing barb, on this side, and that needs to be facing this way. And that's what picks up your bobbin, your bobbin thread. Anyway, so basically what I do, try not to hit the camera, uh, when I start a project is I'll go get in line, push it down, then I'll drop the press foot really, really lightly. And then from there, just make sure you're, you're going in the hole. And then to back stitch, you can either uh, lift your presser foot, or actually you're going to want to, sorry, you're going to want to leave the needle in there. You can either turn your project, Come back. Or you can leave your needle and lift your presser foot. Drop it down. Back stitch. Oops, I didn't want to do it that way. That's pretty much it. Um, it works pretty smooth. Um, I am going to get an actual sewing machine. I just wanted this for off grid. See, it turns out pretty nice once you get your tension and everything right. Um, backside. Actually, this one didn't even leave hardly any there's a little little there but usually what I what I do is uh, I spray my final top coat on my project and I'll come back with my bone folder and if there's any any notches or anything I just kinda rub them out it turns out pretty well um, I did uh, 
keychain yesterday on here. Um, that turned out just fine. I kind of messed up the stitching. The stitching's kind of with this machine. It's it's not hard to do circles, but the lighting that I have, uh, I need to get a lamp for over here. It's kind of poor. Um, but I mean, it works. I mean, if you're on a budget, you know, go for it. I mean. Just a little fine tuning, like I said earlier. I think I got lucky with my machine. There wasn't much I really had to do with it. But uh, yeah, that's the Chinese shoe patchery. So I'm gonna start incorporating it into uh, some of my projects, like these small ones, like my like this. I'm probably just gonna hand stitch still, and then with my holsters, I'll still hand stitch the holsters because I like the heavier wax thread for those. Uh, even though this machine would be more than uh, capable of handling it. So uh, thanks for watching guys and I uh, hope you guys learned some stuff and if you wanna if you want to get one of these or not um, you know budget wise it's it's great. Uh, if you're any if you have any mechanical knowledge or whatever it's not hard to to get it up and running you know. Um, I could have had this thing up and running in a day. Uh, I just kind of pussyfooted around with the, you know, I didn't, I needed to get new needles and heavier thread, you know, for, for my projects or what I want to do. So, anyway, thanks for watching, guys.